Good morning, everybody. This is um, Movies You Want to Learn Online for April 16th, 2019. It's a Tuesday. We're going to start out the way we always start out, in a um, relaxed position and just start the breath. So you'll note that Kathy has her legs up on a chair with a 90 degree angle at the knees and the hips. She's using a mobility strip under her lower back, uh, which will improve her lumbar stability. If you don't have a mobility strip, you could use a rolled up towel, rolled up tightly towel. She has some towels under her neck. So just bring your arms beside your body, palms up so that you're extending rotating just to open the chest a little bit. And start to watch your breath. We're gonna be here for about four minutes. Just watching your breath without trying to change it. So just becoming aware of the breath that you came, came with. Notice if it gets deeper or slower. It might. And for the last minute or two, if you'd like to, you can do your favorite breathing pattern. It could be rib cage breathing or belly breathing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cue rib cage breathing. So if you wanted to, rib cage breathing, you're going to put your hands on your rib cage at the bottom of the rib cage, just so you can monitor the rib cage breath. And then as you inhale, the ribs expand side to side and front to back. So feel the rib cage expanding in all directions as, as you inhale. And then it receives, it comes back, shrink on the way back. This is actually a very relaxing kind of breath. And it's also helps with breathing. So it ex it's a muscle. We're, we're actually exercising the diaphragm, which is the primary breathing muscle.
And go ahead and set an intention for your practice today. Asen Kalpa is called in yoga. Just a phrase that you can return to if your mind is wandering. And then bring your hands behind your head at the occipital ridge and interlace your fingers. You may want to um, remove one of your towels, just depending on how it feels. You want to still stay in neutral cervical spine. So press your occipital ridge, the bit bottom of your uh, skull, into the back of your hands, your interlaced fingers, and then press the fingers into your hands. We're creating resistance. It's a totally isometric. You're not moving, you're not going anywhere. I've muted both of you because there was static. So if you need to chat with me, you need to um, wave your hand at me or something. Pressing a couple more times, just, just doing this, nothing else. This is a great way to create strength and uh, stability in the neck and cervical spine, which is a place, you know, our, our neck, our cervical spine has carried our, our heads for so long now <laughs> on the top of our body that they're very, it's very tired. Um, it's done a lot of work and we just need to help it stay fit and, um, and, and continue to do its work. This will help. And now, without moving anything else, just shift your eyes to the right, either closed or open, and wait for a, a swallow, yawn, sigh, or gulp, vagus nerve reset. And when you have breathe that, you you find that involuntary response to the work, the, the occipital ridge is, the uh, occipital nerve is, is triggering a vagus nerve reset. Then just go ahead and do it on the other side and do it um, another set as well when you're finished. So I'll just wait for you to do that. And maybe when you're done with your second set, you can just, just raise your hand so that I can tell that you're done. And I'm going to unmute you so you can check with me, guys. Come on up to a seated position um, on the floor cross-legged or some other floor seated position. You could be, have your legs right in front of you and maybe that's what we'll start with. And then, but I'd like to hear from you about how you're doing and what you'd like, what your goals are for today. So if you're seated, remember um, that you could be seated on a brick or, or a bolster or a blanket. To, to create more comfort in your hips, if you need them. Hello. Kathy, what are, what are you thinking today you'd like to work on, or what are you feeling? This is just a check-in. My, probably my lower back. I did a lot of standing yesterday, and it, that part gets very stiff for me. When you stand. 
I'm actually seeing my masseuse today. I'm looking forward to that, but stretches would not hurt that. No. Okay. All right. What about you, Dana? Well, I'm feeling a lot in my uh, upper legs, and I can't tell if it's in my hip flexor or not here. Okay. So I think it's more like upper legs. Upper legs, what do you mean by that? The front of the quad, the quads? Like my quads. Um, and also you know, inner thighs hurt a little bit. Inner thighs, uh, do they hurt because you've been using the... Uh, yeah, it's my uh huh. Inner thighs, yeah. That works been for me too, by the way. What? That works for me too. Yeah, well that's all hip work. Hip work, lower back work. Yeah similar or can be similar i mean sometimes the lower back also involves the thoracic well it always involves the thoracic but i mean if you work on your hips you work on the lower back as well um let's start and i just want you to choose of the three possible seated positions i know you you're in one right now kathy but uh, the, on the seated on the floor position she could be um, seated, maybe you can demonstrate them quickly. This is the, the cross-legged position. And then, or you can put your knee up and just have your knees bent and then forward in front of you. Uh, does that mean like this? Yeah, like that, but uh, spread your feet a little bit. It's like that. So that's another one. And then the, the last position, well, this, well actually there's, there's a, a kneeling position, but you can, or you, you could also be in a Z. So there's actually four seated positions, but we're gonna we're gonna choose one. So this is the Z. Yeah, put your um, oh. left foot you on the right see. thigh. Yeah, that's a Z. And then you know you have to do two two of those, one on each side when you do that one. Uh, there, there. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then the other position is just kneeling on your knee and seated. So those are all four positions that you could sit on the floor. And um, it would be a I'm going to mute again. Um, it would be an alternative to sitting in a chair. So even if someone says, we have to find a chair for you, we have to find a chair for you when you go to a party. Um, you can say, no, 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 I'm fine. I, I'll, I'll sit on the floor. Thank you very much. And I want to show you that all of these, you can increase your posture, which will actually help your lower back. You can improve your posture um, several different ways. And one of them is to um, bring your hands behind you, like a, a, on the floor behind you, like a, a, a stick. It's not, it's not, you're not leaning back on them but you're letting your hands help you open your chest, if that makes any sense. It's not, and Kathy couldn't lean back on them anyway because her hand, arms are shorter than her torso. But, but if you, even if your hands were on the floor, which mine are, I'm not gonna lean on it, but it's like a stick that's helping you uh, sit up tall. And then another thing you can do actually um, is put a brick or, or a, um, uh, a blanket underneath your hips. Which one did you choose, Dana? Which which seated position? Oh, you're in a lotus. Your lotus. Okay. Are you seated on? I can't tell. Are you seated on a cushion? Oh no, you're not in lotus. I can't. You're in a, a Z. You're in a Z, right? Oh, I can't. Are you in a Z? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to want to do both sides, but remember, so you could be seated on a block or a brick. That's one way to get taller and get more, more comfortable, ease in this pose. You could put your hands behind your back, but remember, you're not pushing on them. It just allows you to open up and sit up taller. And the last thing you could do is take a sponge ball or even a, a ball that's heavier than a sponge ball and put it out in front of you. And this also will help uh, open your chest. Yes, like that, just arms straight out. 
and um, let me. I can't hold that very long. Well, don't do it then. I mean, hold. This is. These are. Um, this also. Well, you could do this. That also, actually, that's true. You could do this. Also. And another cue I, I have, for, but this is for both seated and standing posture, is squeeze, imagine squeezing an orange under your armpits. And see if that, so your arms are long. It's, yeah, I wouldn't, I would just, your arms are relaxed beside you. Squeeze, squeeze your armpits with an arm, as if you had an orange. So what you want to do when you're seated on the floor, as as well as seated in a chair, is you want to make sure or attempt to find some sort of good posture so that the, the spine is coming up from, you know, up straight up, aligning the hips and the shoulders. Now, if this starts to hurt, should I switch to the other side? Yes, please switch to the other side. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you, with all this information, to go forth and sit on the floor. And the, the, the good news about that is it helps your hips, it, ha it can help your posture if you're trying to maintain good posture, which I just showed you how to do, uh, improve your posture here. And it also, the getting up and down actually helps juice the food. So it's not just sitting on the floor, but it's getting to the floor and getting back up and doing that again and again that actually can start to um, awaken and juice up the knee joints, especially, but also the hip joints. So there, three seated positions, four seated positions. seated on the floor. Well, um, go ahead and hips. Lie on your back. Again, go back down to the floor. So I think, and you need to tell me if this is not the case, that um, I think that one of the things can happen, and you need to listen to your own body and when you're practicing, is you can you can have too much of anything, even a good thing. So lying on the floor on your back for the entire class would not be a good thing, even though lying on your back, I like supine positions. One of the reasons I like to practice supine is because then you don't have to worry about gravity. You can, you can move your hips, your shoulders, your pelvis. You can move it all of these places you can move without worrying about good posture. So this is a very, and, and you get better at all those things and it actually improves your posture. So, so lying on your back with your knees bent, what I'd like you to do is do the six um, directions of movement of the pelvis. They're in pairs, three pairs of six movements. No. Well, six movements total. Three pairs, six movements total. The first movement is, t so I want you to see if you can isolate, either now or as you practice this, isolate the movement of the pelvis so that you're not moving the lumbar spine. And one of the things that will help you do that is if you um, do the, press the lumbar spine into a mobility, the mobility strip or something similar to that. So you're, it's a slight pressure, but it's going to try to stabilize that area. So that, and, and just think about moving just the pelvis. So think of the two pelvic bones on either side of the sacrum and below the lumbar spine. And then tilt forward, so the tailbone, you can think of the tailbone moving down toward the floor for your, and, or the tailbone moving up toward the ceiling. Or you may want to think of the... Um, top of the pelvis, which is, you know, you, if you go to the side, you feel that, that the, one of the high points is at the side at your waist, but then back behind you also uh, is a bone. So you could think of the top of the pelvis as going down toward the floor as the tailbone goes up, 
the top goes back. That's a posterior tilt. You don't have to remember that. And then the other direction would be the tailbone goes down. The, the top of the pelvis comes up. So you're just rocking your pelvis back and forth slowly and seeing how still that can be. So this is a movement. Just know that you can move the pelvis. The pelvis moves independently of the, well, the thigh, thigh bone, the femur, and it also moves independently of the spine, and especially the lumbar spine. So think of that as you breathe and become aware of the breath and the movement. One of the things this, this series does, this pelvis directions of motion series does, is release, release the hips and the spine. Because often when the hips are, are hurting, it's because they're bringing the, they're not, the pelvis isn't moving independently of the, of the spine. So do that one more time. And then the next movement, put your hand, thumbs on top of your, um, the side bone, the, the side of the pelvis, the bony side, you ought to be able to find it just at your waist. It's, it's at your waist, it's not down there. It's right at the waist. So think of your waist, find the bone at the side of your body that you, that you can poke. That's probably about it, Kathy. So there, with, the, with that in mind, I want you to tilt the lift, it's like a hip hike. If you were standing, it would be a hip hike. You're gonna lift the right side of the pelvis up towards your armpit, and then drop it, and lift the left side of your pelvis, <laughs> pelvis, pelvis up. So it's not lifting it off the floor, you guys. It's, um, it's a lift or a shift towards the armpit. So it's not a rocking and rolling. You're not doing that. We'll do that next, actually. I'm sorry, I'm not curious. What are we doing? We're doing a hip hike. So, okay. Yeah. It's just up and down. Um, it's not up and down. It's side to side. It's a it's sort of a side bend. Okay. Let me see something. I'm going to show it to you seated. If I can. Well, this is your, I'm going to put this down a little bit. So I'm seated. I'm putting my hands on this bone. It's right at the top. And I'm shifting up. And uh, it's a height. So actually my legs are moving. I'd like, I like my legs not to move, actually. So that the movement is just the pelvis. It's easier to isolate the movement when you're on your back, supine. So you're moving your hip towards your shoulder? Toward the armpit, yep. Okay, all right. That's yeah, yeah, toward the shoulder is good, good too. So here's the edge of your pelvis. You can feel it all the way down. You're going to press on, to, on it where it's at the top point and then lift. It's a, it's a height. Yep and down, and then, so this is the, uh, the next pair of movements, right and left, hiking one side, the other side drops. Belly dancers know how to do this really well. And uh, it's a really good, and try to think of that as being a movement that's separate from the lumbar. So keep all of the other body parts quiet while you're doing this movement. Did you find it? Mm -hmm. Good, that looks good. If you start having low back issues or hip issues, trying to isolate the pelvis, the movement of the pelvis from the rib cage, the spine, and the uh, legs is a very good um, remedy. It, it 
increases your awareness of movement and it makes the movement, I mean, even when you stop, which you should do on this one, um, when, you, when you walk away from the practice today, you'll have a different message in your hips for how to move, if that makes any sense to you. I hope it does. The last the pair is a, a rotation of, of the pelvis. And this time you can put your hands on the bony landmark that's called the ASIS. It's on the top of the, um, it's, it's in front. Yeah, it's a little farther up than that, Kathy, I think. Well, my, my hip bone's right here. Oh, okay. So that's the top, it's on, on the top. And um, you're gonna drop that bone, the hip bone to the floor behind you, to the floor and then bring it back to center and then drop it to the other side. So this is a rotation. You're actually rotating the pelvis around the sacrum. And so think of that movement. All of these are, are very small movements. And the only thing to avoid here is it's often, it's easy to add a hip hike here so it creates you know, something else rather than a pure rotation. And you try not to hike up toward the armpit, just try to drop it and release it, and drop the other side and release it. And think of it as happening, rotating the pelvis around the sacrum, which is the, the, the bottom anchor of the spine. It, some people call it part of the spine. These movements are very subtle, but they're very powerful because our core and our hips reside you know, our, our hip movements reside in this region. So uh, it can help us start to move well, intelligently here. And you can stop whenever you're ready. Um, what next? Let's go ahead and do just the standard leg lifts. So you're still aware of the head of the femur, the, which is a ball, it is a ball and socket, ball and socket joint. And the socket is in the pelvis, which we're, we've been moving, right? And then now in the socket that's in the outer edge of the pelvis, the femur, the head of the femur, which is the thigh bone is rock is moving and gliding and rotating. So we're going to do some of those that moving and gliding and rotating, but we're going to do it with awareness. So Poppy, go ahead and move your um, right thigh towards your feet. Yeah. And then bring it back down. And do this again and try Go ahead and stay on the right side just so I can, look. yeah, that's nice. And then keep that shape when you come down. So don't, don't decrease your angle. Up and down, slower down than up. And inhale, so add a breath and some awareness. In the movement. And up she goes, inhale. And then exhale, think of the movement as happening in that socket. So all of the movement happens there. If you start to feel like you're using your lumbar, involving that or, the, or your face or your rib cage or your other leg, um, stop and then try to make it, the movement more pure or more isolated. 
and make your return slower than the, uh, the first, the initial one. Nice. And switch sides. You could, in your own practice, without me telling you, you know, what to do, you could do this as an alternating position. You know, alternate one leg and then the other. Even though this seems like the most basic of movements, which it is, it's also extremely important uh, to remind your body that this is the way that this, the femur is supposed to move in this hip socket. But this is, you can uh, almost make a little song out of it, you know, this is, this is the way it's supposed to be done, you know. This is it. Make it slow, make it aware. If you meet any tension or pain, make the movement sw smaller or slow it down or stop it completely. Inhaling as you come up and exhaling as you return, make the return slower than the coming up. Do this in your home practice, I would do it maybe even 12 times. So here we usually do three or six. Just so we can get more poses in. But, um, so this movement is called flexion, hip flexion and extension. So this is flexion and then this is extension and flexion and extension. And then the next one is abduction and adduction. So you can start on the left side because that's the side that we can see. And and so your opening knee drops, these are called side, bent knee side drops. So here's the deal. You want to make sure that the movement is isolated, is only happening in the hip socket where the ball, of the head of the femur meets the same hip. So if you find something else moving, any body part, any other body part, Obviously, your lower leg is going to move, but because it moves with the, with yeah, the no. But if you if you find your lumbar involved, if you start feeling this in the rib cage or even the other leg, then slow it down, become more aware, and make it um, as pure as you can, basically. And if you find that you're using the psoas or the uh, muscle that's in, floor in the groin, then you've gone too far because you should, the muscle that's being used here is the outer muscle, the ad, abductor, and then or the end. And when you come back in, it's the in, um, adductor. So that's the muscle that's moving this bone, the leg bone. And if you're using the hip flexor, which we were using in the last movement, um, then you're compensating. You're going farther than your abductor and adductor allows. So you want to become aware of that with practice and slow it down. And what will happen is that you will get more capacity to move using your abductor and your adductor when you don't allow the hip flexor to help. Very nice. Go ahead and do the other side. Can we together? 
Um, they should probably be about hip distance apart. Okay. And if that's, it's hard for you to space, you could put a yoga block as a space thing. Okay, out she goes, inhaling on the uh, initial movement and exhaling on the return, which is lower than the initial movement. And then take a little respite by bringing the soles of your feet together and then opening your knees. And if you need to, put a brick or a blanket or a towel or a washcloth underneath your knees so that you're not overstretching the grind. But this is a very nice resting pose. Unless it isn't. So just know that you may need support to do this, or this may not be the pose for you. But it's a hip opener and a, and a restorative yoga pose. So just so you know, this, is, this would be a nice, a nice hip opener whenever you think, I want to slow down, but I still want to open my hips. <laughs> Just breathe into that. And then bring your knees back towards each other together. We're going to do a bridge pose so your hips are. Um, about where well, your feet are about hip distance apart. This is good for quads and uh, psoas and core um, and shoulders because you're using your, you can put your palms down this time because you're going to use the triceps to keep your, keep your, your stability, right? So I, what I want you to do is find your core, so brace your core. And I want you to come up, oh, come up, bring your hips up so that your shoulders and knees are lined up all the way up. But, oh. but do, it, do it with the core. Uh, you're not, do not going to do it articulating your spine. It's, that's not another option. I'm not doing that option. This is all of your spine lifts at the same time. Um, yeah, all of you, it all uh, comes up at once. But first, brace your torso to, and, and so that your core is helping you do this. Your quads and your core are at work here. So I'm not sure what you mean, not this. Well, no, you can come up like that. As long, what I don't want you to do, um, and I, it's not, it's confusing because it is an alternative pose, although I don't recommend it actually, but um, is some people, cue in Pilates especially, sometimes the cue is to come up one vertebra at a time. I'm asking you to come up with all your vertebras at the same time. That's all. I'm asking you to do be a boomstick. Does that make sense? Your spine is a boomstick when you're coming up. Yeah, that looks good to me. Now remember that your core is going to help you do this. And if this is hard for you, 
I would put, just make it more of a resting pose and put a brick under your butt. Um, and stay there and breathe because you can still get some of the benefits of the movement. Mm -hmm. Can be there. Yeah, could be there. And it could be cramped. Whoops. Are you, yeah, so this is just one of the ways to do a bridge. A bridge is a very good core work and it's work on the quads and, um, and the hips. So up you go and then you can come up and down or you could just stay, especially if you're supported in the brick. And a thick brick might give you more options than a thin brick. Kathy? The, the computer's on the thick brick. Oh, you need two thick bricks. <laughs> And another thing you can do um, uh, is you can put your legs up on a chair, but this is actually more difficult. You can lift your legs, put them on a brick or uh, something, do even just a little lift and do the same bridge. And you'll find a, a different movement. You'll, you'll just be working on a different in a slightly different position. Let me try that. Oops. Let me try that. The so legs on a chair. Right. Now, that might be too high for you, but you can try it and see. Higher, it would be harder. Put your legs up. Oh, no. And your feet on the chair. Your, your feet. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh. Feet. I understand. Okay. I would take your socks off. Let me see here. Would this chair work? That might work better. I mean, it's good. Yeah. Now, I would take your socks off just so you can. And then now, so bend, bend your knees to start. So you start with a bent knee position. Down. So your knees are bent. Your, your, your heels or the mid foot are on the chair. Yes. And I would put your midfoot on the edge of the chair. Yes. And see if that works. Now lift your hips. It's the same bridge. It's the same bridge. Uh huh. Up you go. I'm getting that same cramp. Oh. Well, that's actually easier for me. That's easier? Oh, okay. <clears throat> How are you doing, Dana? Okay, now with your feet on the chair, your, your, the soles of your feet are on the chair. So this is, it's not the same as in, in the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's, let's see. Let me look at, so the, see how, you, so your feet are, are, are supported by the chair. Right, pressing against the chair. Kathy, you could lift your um, toes. You could lift your toes. So lift your toes, and so that's another position for your feet. So your feet could be on the chair or, or there, mm -hmm. and then come on down, and up you go. So you say this is easier? Yeah, it's easier for me. Okay, well, maybe I'm wrong about the harder part. Or I could be weird. No, and, and maybe it's your, your body versus the other. Dana, is this harder or easier for you? I don't know. I've got to put uh, something under my back. Okay. So let me say that, Dana, this, if this pose is 
bringing you pain, then I don't want you to do it. So pain is our, mess is our, best, our most favorite message. Should I not be putting something under me? Well, you're lifting up off of it. I mean, I think if it, you can put something underneath. Um, the lifting is the movement. So the bridging is the, is the significant, you know, the, the main feature in this pose. So you're going to be bridging up off of whatever you put under your back. So the, what you put under your back is going to help you when you're a start, but it's not going to do much for you later unless you're putting a brick under there and making it a static pose instead of an up and down repetitive pose. Go ahead and um, move your chair away and we're gonna do a hyperpressive, um, which is kind of a nice thing to do after the bridge. Well, at least I think it is. Lay on your back. You can put towels under your head. You can put a, the mobility strip under your back. Land your back and put your hands up in front of your face. Make a circle. Bend your elbows. Make a circle. Palms facing the ceiling. And pressing away from you into the ceiling. Separate your hands so that they're by the outside of your face. And lift your toes. So the heels stay on the floor. The toes are Lift, uh, lift your entire foot, except for the heels. Yes, it's a, it's a dorsiflexion of the foot. Now from here, this is the shape you keep you stay in. And um, I want you to take three breaths, inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling on the last exhale exhale it all out hold your breath out so apnea spread your ribs one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and go ahead and relax everything inhaling and exhaling um, rest your arms too if you want. We're going to do that two more times. Does anyone have, do you have any questions about this? Dana, do you have a question about this? Dana, do you have a question about this? Oh, wait a minute. I, I muted you and now I'm trying to talk to you. That doesn't work well. Dana, do you have a question? Dana, are you? No. Good, okay. Let me put your arms overhead, round, bend your elbows, palms facing up, pressing, your palms are actually pressing in towards the ceiling. You should feel that movement, that tension. And then um, they vertiflex the feet so that the heels are on the floor, but the toes are pointing back towards the knees. Yes, lift your toes. Now, inhale three times. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Last one, inhaling and exhaling. At the end of the exhale, hold the breath out. It's called apnea. And spread your rib cage. Count to 10. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Release everything. Drop your arms. And we'll do it one more time. So this is great for core and pelvic floor work. It creates a vacuum. The holding of the breath creates a vacuum which pulls the pelvic floor up towards the, the heart or the rib cage uh, and um, exercises and strengthens the whole pelvic floor. And the, obviously I think you can feel the core work also. Go ahead and come back, we'll do it one more time. There's a whole series of these, but the breathing pattern is always the same. 
go ahead and pr press your hands and palms up in towards the ceiling. So create a little tension there. And inhale three times, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And one more, inhale, exhale. Hold the breath out, apnea it's called. Keep the breath held out, no breathing. And spreading your rib cage, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale and exhale, and you're done with three hyperpresses. And that should, if you, I'd like to do that one. I'd like to do some of the hyperpressives often enough in the, in the class that you can do them by yourself, you know, uh, you can remember them to do by yourself because um, hyper, I don't want to do a whole practice of hyperpressives, but they are very helpful for incontinence, prolapse, and just uh, uh, core work, core work and pelvic floor work. So it's a really good thing to do and you can do it lying on your back like this. There's some standing positions too and some quadruped positions, but this is a good, good place to start. Come on up, let's see, what are other, come on into a child's pose. So just come, turn around, get into quadruped. And why not, why don't you put a couple of therapy balls at your knee to relieve the thigh? What size? Um, try either one, uh, either one, either the plus size, or I think is what you have, or the alpha. Well, you're going to need them. They're going to be out of the bag. Out of the bag. Oh, okay. One at each knee crease. One at each knee? Yeah. And, yeah, right there. Oh, well, okay. Okay, uh, well, might be, have to go. Well, might be easier. I only have one. Oh, I only have one that can't find the other one. I'll just go one at a time. Okay, one at a time. Just lean forward so your hips lean backward, right? And you capture the balls and then you lengthen your spine. Crawl forward, lengthen your spine, and bring your arms out, just in a regular child's way. Straighten your arms, Kathy. There's, they're not hyperextended, but they're straight. And um, you might want to put a brick or a um, washcloth under your head if your head is not on the floor. And, create a little more comfort for you. Crawl your arms out, just feel a nice stretch in your armpits. Crawl, crawl your arms out even further if you can, Kathy, create a little, even more length. Nice. As far as they go. What? That's as far as they go. Well, that's as far as they go. How do the balls feel? They feel, they feel what? They feel good. Okay. Feel, yeah. You can actually change, put the balls a little farther back. And for Dana, if she just has one ball, she'll want to put, put it on the other side. Um, but oh, you can put both your balls a little farther back on the calf. So you can work all your way up the, you can imagine you're working up the uh, thigh, right? The back of the thigh, the hamstrings really. 
and then the and then the calf. This is a great way to relax the spine, lengthen the spine, release the lower back, and work on your hamstrings and your calves. How how many things can you do at once? <laughs> and shoulder armpits. <laughs> this is a great overall pose, and it's a restorative of sorts. Kathy, you may want to move your balls one one back one more time. If you can still capture them. And just take a couple breaths here. Straighten your arms if you can, Dana. Straighten your arms, Dana. Yeah, crawl your arms out in front of you to create a, a stretch in the armpits and the shoulder. Unless that's painful for you, then don't do it. So just remember, that's always the, the messenger is always, if, if it's painful, don't do it. Otherwise, please try to do it. I mean, if you eat, reach tension, if you eat tension and you, see, and you say, well, this is pain, this is tension, that's the messenger too. So that may be, I'm, you've gone about as far as I'm, as I'm gonna allow you to go. And then just slowly come up a little bit onto your hands and knees and then find your way onto your back for the closing um, meditation. And if you'd like to, and I encourage you to put your legs back up on the floor, but not, not a requirement. You don't fail the class if you don't do that. Just one of my favorite poses for all the reasons I've mentioned. I didn't hear what you said. I said, um, if you choose to, put your legs back up on the chair. Oh, okay. And then I said, it's not a crime if you don't do it. <laughs> just, just a request. Um, but you know, I mean, I've given you a, the context, the rationale for it. So if that feels dramatic to you, then, you know, do, do that. The only a disadvantage in the closing of the past, putting, putting your legs up, is you have to push your chair away at the end so you can stretch out. So lie some, somewhere where you're comfortable and warm. I'm going to ask you to move your attention through internal points that I mentioned, starting with your breath, breathing in and breathing out, observing your abdomen as it rises and falls with the gentle flow of your breath. Now bring your awareness to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, right elbow, wrist, right big thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, right shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left hand thumb, Second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, left elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual head center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, right knee, right ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of the pelvis, left hip, left knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, 
fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of the pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This concludes your 61 point guided meditation. This was developed by Swami Rama, founder of the Himalayan International Institute of Yoga, Science and Philosophy, many years ago. Go ahead and start to notice your breath. You may want to push your chair away. so that you can extend your legs out along the mat. And then stretch your body in both directions, extending your legs in one direction and your arms uh, overhead in the other direction. Wiggle your feet, wiggle your fingers, wiggle one side of your body, wiggle the other side of your body. Notice the changes that occur when you listen to your body and move it. Hug your right knee into your chest and then your left. Hug both knees to your chest. Rock your knees from side to side. This is a great um, lower back uh, antidote, antidote, antidote. What's, what's the right word? I bet Dana knows. And then whenever you're ready, just roll all the way to one side and come up to seated. Take your time. Rest after you've rolled to your side and into your fetal position. Rest. And then you can just whenever you're ready, come on up to see them. Sit in one of your favorite sitting in the floor positions, choose one of the four that we practice today. Find your good posture. Bring your hands to your heart and press your fingers together, your palms together, your fingers together. Stimulate the nerve endings in the on the palms and the fingers. Lift your skull back and up. The chin breath because you did that. And then we're just going to say to each other to close the class, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you, Via. See you next week. Have a good week, Kathy. You too. Bye-bye, Dana. Bye. I will send out this recording sometime today. Thank you.